Hello, this video will walk you through the Tutorial 5 project of the New Perspectives Microsoft Access 2010 textbook. This video is provided as a supplement to the assigned reading for Mount San Jacinto College's CAP 123 using Microsoft Access course facilitated by Anna Sterling. It is important to note that not every section of the tutorial is included in this video. It is important that you read all sections of the tutorial from the textbook to ensure you fully understand how to complete all of the tasks for this tutorial. To start this project, we will be working from a new data file, not the tutorial 4 file. To open the Panorama database, navigate to where you have your data files stored. Double click on the Access Tutorials 5 through 8 folder then double click the Access 2 folder. Next, open the Tutorial folder and finally open the Panorama database. I recommend saving the database with a different file name at this point so you'll have a clean database if you need to start over for any reason. To save the database, click on the File tab and choose Save Database As. Navigate to where you want to save the file and click Save. Now you can work in the new database without worrying about the original file. Using a pattern match in a query. We already know how to create queries that use a range of values or an exact match to select and view records. But what if we want information that isn't that easy to locate? No problem, Access can do that too. To start we're going to look for a pattern in our data and return all the records that have that pattern specifically the 616 area code. Click on the Create tab, then choose Query Design from the Queries group. From the Show Table dialog box, add the TBL Customer table and then close the dialog box. Double click the title of the table box to select all of the fields and then drag them to the field box in the design grid. When you let go of the mouse button, all of the fields are included in the query. Click the criteria box under the phone field and type the letter L. Ignore the formula autocomplete menu and finish typing IKE. Add 616 star with quotation marks around it. The star and quotes are important. Don't omit them. Save the query as QRY616 area code and run the query. You should see 24 records. If not, make sure you included the star in the quotes and then run your query again. Before we move on, make sure you change the first and last to your first and last name in record 11004. Save and close the query. using a list of values match in a query. Next, we're going to create a query using the inComparison operator. This allows you to define a condition with a list of two or more values for a field. If a record's value matches any value from the list, the record is displayed in your results. For example, in this query, we want to see customers who live in Holland, Rockford, or Sagatech. To begin, create a copy of the 616 area code query. You can do this from the backstage view or by right clicking and choosing copy. You can do it whichever way you prefer. When you paste it, change the name to QRY Holland Rockford Sagatech Customers. I know, longest name ever for a query. Open the query and change to design view. Delete the existing area code criteria. We don't need that for this query. Right click the criteria box under City and choose Zoom from the shortcut menu. When the Zoom dialog box opens, type in space parenthesis quotation mark Holland quotation mark comma quotation Rockford 
quotation, comma, quotation, Sagatuck, quotation, parenthesis, and press OK. Save and run the query. Your query should return 13 records. If not, go back and check your typing in the Zoom box. Remember, everything must be exact. A typo here will cause it to not work. Using the not logical operator in a query. This type of query returns values that do not meet your criteria. In this query, we're going to return customers who do not live in Holland, Rockford, or Sagatech. Create a copy of the Holland Rockford Sagatech query and rename it non Holland Rockford Sagatech. Open the query and switch to design view. Open the zoom box and add the word not before in. Click OK. Save and run the query. 29 records are returned and none of them list Holland, Rockford, or Sagatech as the city. It really is that simple. Assigning a conditional value to a calculated field. Make sure you read the information about the ampersand operator, the IIF function, and the isNull function in the textbook on pages AC228 and AC229. Understanding how they work will be critical for you to understand how to create the necessary expression in the case problem. To create the query, click the Create tab and choose Query Design. Add the customer table and close the show table dialog box. We're going to add the expression in the first column, but we also want to include the fields from the customer table. So double click the title of the table box to select all of the fields and drag them to the second field box in the design grid. Right click the first box and choose build. This opens the Expression Builder dialog box. The name of the calculated field is going to be Customer, so type Customer colon space. Double click Functions in the Expression Elements column. Then choose Built-in Functions. In the Expressions Categories column, scroll until you find Program Flow and select it. Now double click on IIF in the Expression Values column. This inserts the placeholders for the IIF function. We don't need the EXPR field because we already typed customer, so you can delete it. Next, we need the isNull function. Click on Expression, then click on Inspection from the Expression Categories column. Next, double click is null in the expression values column to insert it into the expression. Click on expression and type company. Click on false part and type company again. Click on true part and type last name space ampersand space quotation mark comma space, quotation mark, space, ampersand, space, first name. Make sure you type it exactly or your expression will not work. Click OK to close the expression builder. The expression now appears in the field box. If I expand the column size, you can see the whole expression. Sort the results by this column in ascending order. Save the query as QRY customers by name. Run the query. Resize the column so you can read the values in the new column. Save and close the query. Creating a parameter query. A parameter query displays a dialog box that prompts the user to enter one or more criteria values to run the query.
For this query, the database user will enter the city parameter. To begin, create a copy of the customers by name query and rename it QRY customers by name parameter. I know, another long query name. Open the query and switch to design view. In the city criteria box, type square bracket, type the city colon square bracket. Make sure you include the square brackets. This tells Access this is a parameter request. This will be the information the user will see when they attempt to run the query. Save and run the query. When the Enter Parameter Value dialog box opens, type Holland in the box and click OK. Seven records, all with Holland as the city, display. If you do not enter anything in the parameter box, Access will return no results. Read pages AC235 through AC237 to learn more about this and how to modify your query if you want all the records to display if no value is entered in the parameter box. Creating a cross-tab query. Cross-tab queries use aggregate functions to perform arithmetic operations on selected records. To see a list of aggregate functions, see figure 5-17 on page AC240. We're going to use the crosstab query wizard to build our query. So, go to the Create tab and click on Query Wizard from the Queries group. From the New Query dialog box, choose Crosstab Query Wizard and click OK. From the next screen, choose Queries from the View options and then choose Query, QRY, Customers and Invoice from the list and click Next. In the Available Fields box, click City and add it to the selected fields list using the arrow. Click Next. Choose Invoice Paid from the Available Field values and click Next. Choose Invoice Amount from the Fields list and then choose Sum from the Functions list. Make sure the box next to Yes, Include Row Sums is checked and then click Next. Delete the underscore from the query name to follow the Beaumont naming convention and click Finish. Each city's records now display, but the column headings don't make any sense as negative 1 and 0, so we're going to change the headings so they are easy to read. Switch to Design View. Right click on the Invoice Paid field box and choose Zoom. Delete the contents of the box and type IIF space parenthesis invoice paid comma quotation paid quotation comma quotation unpaid quotation parenthesis and then click OK. Now when you run the query the headings read paid and unpaid. Close and save the query. This process of renaming the headings is going to be important for completing the case problem, so make sure you know how to complete it. Creating a Find Duplicates Query This query, as its name alludes to, finds duplicate values for a specified field. To create this query, click on Query Wizard from the Queries group on the Create tab. Choose Find Duplicates Query Wizard from the dialog box and click OK. Choose Table TBL Contract from the list and click Next. Choose Start Date from the Available Fields list and move it to the Duplicate Value Fields list and then click Next. From the next window, add all of the available fields to the Additional Query Fields list and then click Next. Change the name of the query to QRY Duplicate Contract Start Date 
and click Finish. Creating a lookup field. A lookup field lets the user select a value from a list of possible values to reduce data entry errors. In this example, we will change the customer ID field in the TBL contract table to a lookup field. To begin, open the TBL contract table in Design View. Click the left side of the customer ID data type and choose Lookout Wizard from the drop down menu. Oh no, we can't change this data type because it is part of a relationship. Click OK in the warning box, close the table, and then click No when asked to save the changes. We have to delete the existing relationship so we can change the data type. Go to the Database Tools tab and click on Relationships. Right click on the relationship line between the TBL customers and TBL contract tables and select delete. Click yes to delete the relationship. Close the relationship window. Reopen the TBL contract table in design view. Click the left side of the customer ID data type box. Are you having a little deja vu? Yeah, me too. Choose lookup wizard. This time, however, the wizard opens. Ensure that the I want the lookup fields to get the values from another table or query option is selected and click Next. Choose queries from the view options. Select Query QRY Customers by Name and then click Next. Add Customer and Customer ID to the Selected Fields box and click Next. Click the arrow in the One box and choose Customer, then click Next. Resize the fields to best fit and then click Next. Click Customer ID and then click Next. Click Finish. Now, when you click on the Customer ID field for any record, there is an option arrow to the left. Click on it to see the available options. Using the Input Mask Wizard. An input mask allows you to set the way data will appear in a field no matter how it is entered. For this tutorial, we will add an input mask to the phone number field to display all the phone numbers with hyphens. To begin, open the TBL Customer table in Design View. Click the Phone Field box. Click in the Input Mask box in the Field Properties area and then click on the three dots from the right side to open the Input Mask wizard. The first input mask is the phone number format. This is what we want, so make sure it is selected and then click Next. Click Finish to accept the remaining defaults of the wizard. Notice that Access adds backslash characters to the input mask. Review the list of input mask characters on page AC260 to understand why these characters may or may not be important. Change the input mask to read 999 backslash hyphen 000 backslash 0000 semicolon semicolon underscore, which will remove the parentheses, and press tab. Notice the property update options button appears, the little lightning bolt. Click on it and choose update input mask everywhere our phone is used. When the Update Properties box opens, click Yes. Save the table and switch to Datasheet View to see the input mask applied to the phone field. Defining Data Validation Rules To prevent a user from entering an unacceptable value to a field, you can apply a validation rule. For this tutorial, we will apply a validation rule to ensure that only an amount over $10 is entered into the Invoice Amount field.
To begin, open the TBL invoice table in Design View. Click the Invoice Amount field, and in the Field Properties area, click in the Validation rule box. Type the greater than symbol, the number 10, and press Tab. In the Validation text box, type Invoice Amounts must be greater than 10. Save the table, click Yes in the Warning dialog box, and switch to Datasheet View. To test the validation rule, change the invoice amount of the first record to 5 and press Enter. A dialog box appears with our warning message, invoice amounts must be greater than 10. Click OK and change the value back to 1500. Remember, not every section of the tutorial is included in this video. It is important that you read all sections of the tutorial from the textbook to ensure you fully understand how to complete all of the tasks for this tutorial.